If you're suffering from cervicogenic dizziness and confused by all the information that's out on the internet on which are the best treatments to treat cervicogenic dizziness, stay tuned because in this video, we're going to break down a 2014 research study that looked at two different manual therapy approaches for the treatment of cervicogenic dizziness. We're going to go over the pertinent parts of the study and the best part is we're going to look at the interventions that they did that were highly effective for decreasing cervicogenic dizziness not only in the short run, but in the long run. Let's check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Morrow. I'm your host, Morrow Burnett. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a board certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialists located here in Jacksonville, Florida. For today's episode, I'm excited to share with everyone a 2014 research article by Susan Reed et al. The name of the article is Manual Therapy for Cervicogenic Dizziness, Long-Term Outcomes of a Randomized Trial. Susan Reed is a fantastic researcher and expert on cervicogenic dizziness. Then she'd already done a previous study on using manual therapy interventions for short-term relief in cervicogenic dizziness cases. But in this study, they're going to look at long-term. It had a 12-month follow-up to test out two different popular forms of manual therapy, check out their efficacy, and see how they maintained it a year later. So we're going to get into the study. We'll talk a little bit about the pertinent details, but most importantly, hopefully what you get out of this is that you'll have an idea of maybe who to search out in your community if you're looking for a physiotherapist or physical therapist to help you if you're serving, suffering from cervicogenic dizziness. Moreover, we're also going to look at some of the home exercises that they did in the study that proved to be efficacious for decreasing cervicogenic dizziness. So let's look at the study a little bit and we'll get into some of this. Okay, the first thing when I look at the study is 86 participants went into the study. They recruited a ton of folks, but then they had to dismiss uh, participants if they had dizziness, but maybe it was associated with other problems, ear problems, stroke problems, um, Parkinson's, etc. So folks were whittled down. They ended up with about 86. Of the 86, they split them into three groups. One group received one style of manual therapy called mulligan snag techniques, and we'll define that out a little bit. Another group received Maitland, Jeff Maitland style manual therapy techniques. And then the third group received a placebo technique. And then they measured at the beginning of the study, at 12 weeks, and then at 12 months, the efficacy of these interventions. I just want to say, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel and receive more videos like this in the future. And don't forget to hit that little bell at the top. The little bell will notify you every time we put out a new video. Hopefully we're going to keep these videos going out every couple weeks. And remember, you could always like or comment or share the video. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this study. They were allocated into the three groups. Each participant received between two and six interventions or physical therapy or physiotherapy sessions with a physiotherapist. The physiotherapist that was used for the study had postgraduate training in Mulligan style manual therapy or Maitland style manual therapy. So that's a good point. We're gonna talk about that later in the, in the video of how if you're looking for someone to help you, it's not a bad idea to try to find someone in your community that has postgraduate training in either Mulligan style manual therapy or Maitland. That could be a good tip. Okay, so they received between two and six interventions over a six week period. And again, we mentioned that the, uh, the outcome measures were measured at the 12 weeks and 12 months. The participants that were in the uh, study, again, they made sure they didn't have a rotatory severe vertigo-like dizziness. It was more of an unsteadiness or disequilibrium. Just to throw out kind of a definition of cervicogenic dizziness, cervicogenic dizziness is a dizziness that occurs with pain, usually in the upper neck, the upper three joints, C1, C2, and C3. 
Other signs and symptoms of cervicogenic dizziness could include headaches, especially headaches that start in the base of the head, obvious neck pain, neck pathology, and maybe dizziness that's provoked with certain postures over your neck. It's more of an unsteadiness or disequilibrium. With vertigo, you feel spinny for maybe 30 seconds and it goes away. With cervicogenic dizziness, you might feel off and on dizziness all day long and it can persist for years. It can be really disabling. I'm sure if you're suffering cervicogenic dizziness, you can definitely speak to that. So let's look at the three groups and see how it all went down. So we mentioned before, they didn't receive months and months of therapy. They really just looked between two and six sessions. Um, in each of the sessions for the Mulligan manual therapy group, they did these snag techniques where you could, the, the physiotherapist holds the base of the head at the upper neck and they guide the participant as they rotate to ensure that their rotation would be dizzy free. Maybe at first they have dizziness with left rotation. So they would do the technique into the provocative position given the scenario where the technique caused pain-free or dizzy-free range of motion. Other participants had maybe dizziness with flexion, so they did a technique to help with them flexing. Other participants had dizziness with extension, so the physiotherapist would choose a technique based on the direction that you would have your dizziness. At the second visit, when they came back, they were given some homework to do. They were called home self-snags, and we're gonna show you how they did that. They were asked to do six reps once a day and do that for the whole 12 months. So that's the Mulligan group. On the Malin group, the participants oftentimes would maybe lie on a table. The manual therapist or physiotherapist would apply gentle oscillatory techniques to C1, C2, or C3, usually about 30 to 45 seconds, and they would do three rounds of this for the upper neck. On their second visit, they were given some homework as well some active range of motion exercises. We'll definitely get into that. And then the third group was given a deactivated laser. They put a laser against their neck, they held it for a certain duration, and they did that in a couple different points. And they were asked to do that once a day. So those are our three groups, that's what they did. Now let's take a look and see how it all worked out. Okay, they measured the uh, intensity of dizziness. So let's look and see how the intensity of dizziness decreased. The intensity of, of dizziness for the Mulligan group decreased by 43% by the 12 month follow up. For the Maitland group, it decreased by 53%. For the placebo group, it only decreased about 28%. Possibly you wait 12 months and a certain amount of people are gonna feel better anyway. But the thing that was interesting about the Mulligan and the Maitland groups was they received their relief pretty quickly, even at the 12 month or the 12 week follow up. Whereas the placebo group really didn't have that relief until that whole year, the 12 month follow up. So definitely showing efficacy at getting relief even in the short run. They also measured the frequency of dizziness. There were significant improvements in both manual therapy groups for the frequency of dizziness but there was not significant improvement for the placebo group. All right, they used a form called a dizziness handicap inventory. So it looks at 0% handicap you know, and totally handicap. And what they found at the end was the magnitude of these reductions were 38% for the Maitland, I'm sorry, for the Mulligan snag group, 38%, and 46% less for the Maitland group there was only a 15% change for the placebo group. So this is looking pretty good so far for both of these styles of manual therapy. The intensity of cervical spine pain, that decreased significantly for both manual therapy groups, not as much for the placebo group. And balance was improved for both manual therapy groups, not so much for the placebo group. So that's a couple good ideas that we could look at for getting you some treatment out there for cervicogenic dizziness. We're gonna put up some information, especially if you live in the US, on how you could find a Maitland certified therapist to treat you if you're having cervicogenic dizziness. There's also more information we'll put up on finding a Mulligan practitioner as well. All right, next what we're gonna do, let's get into some of the interventions that they did and we'll look at some ideas that you could possibly do at home.
let's look at some of the interventions that were done in the study that the participants did at home. The first thing that we'll look at is Mulligan's snag techniques. Okay, well, you can use a strap or sometimes even a medium sized hand towel, but this is a particular strap that uh, is sold. It's called a Mulligan cervical strap. And we'll put a link to this at the uh, end of the video here in the US. I think you can get it for around $20. But I really like it. I use it in the clinic all the time with my patients. And what you do is you place this right at the earlobes and the tip of the nose. That's going to line up with the C1 vertebra. Let's go with a scenario that I have dizziness when turning to the left. Right? So I place this, the earlobes, and at the, C, at the tip of the nose. I drop one side, I grab the other, so that's important that you crisscross. I'm going to keep this against my jaw here, or against my cheekbone. You don't want to pull so much that it's uncomfortable, but you don't want to have slack. Let the strap do all the work and let it take you to the left as far as you can comfortably without having dizziness. If you're able to do that and you notice, wow, I can go a little further, it's less painful, less dizzy, that's fantastic. That's the way you want to do it. If you go to do the technique and you notice it's just not making me feel good, I'm still getting dizzy, it's still painful, take a moment and adjust. Mulligan would teach go up a millimeter or down a millimeter to see if the placement of the snag strap is the problem. So the participants, if they found they could go in that direction in a dizzy free manner, they were asked to do that six times and to do that once a day. Okay? If you had dizziness, with extension, if I run my hand off the back of my head, and then about the first fingers width underneath my skull is gonna be C1. If I go down about one more, one finger below my skull, now I'm gonna be close to the C2 spinous process. It's a, the biggest bump that you can feel right back here. You place the strap at the C2 spinous process, and then very carefully, you go up as far as you can comfortably without dizziness. And then you come back. Ready? Notice the strap goes pretty high with me as I go up. You don't want the strap here while you go up. It doesn't give you the support. Has to be dizzy free. But if that was your provocative position, then you would do that six reps. Finally, if you have dizziness with flexing forward, same idea, I place it back on the C2 spinous process. I add a little bit of pressure going forward and I maintain that pressure while I go into flexion. If you notice that reduces your dizziness, reduces your pain, then you would do that six times. But that's what the participants were asked to do. Once a day, six reps into their provocative position. So that was the Mulligan group. For the Maitland group, they received interventions by a therapist. That's why I recommend uh, find someone in your community that's skilled in these techniques and get the help that you need. Sometimes on these videos, we show you techniques that you can do at home, and sometimes they're fantastic. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's a really good idea to recruit a good physiotherapist in your community to help you out. But for the uh, Malin group, after they received their interventions, they were asked to do range of motion, to go as far as you can comfortably to the left without dizziness or pain, three times. And then we go to the right three times. Nice and slow, nice and easy. Make sure it's symptom free. They were asked to go up three times. They were asked to go down three times as far as you can comfortably. And they were asked to go side to side three times. Sounds like a very small amount of exercise, and it was for the participants, but the interesting part, as we saw the data, it had a pretty good result on decreasing dizziness, even at a 12-month follow-up. Once a day, three reps in all six planes. So there you go. There's the interventions that they did in the study. Well, thanks for watching today's video on cervicogenic dizziness relief. Hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to uh, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think about this type of uh, video format. And we appreciate you guys watching as always. Remember, you could subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this in the future. It's free. Why not, right? We appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.